Today, Tilly Fox will be teaching you how to block hackers and specific websites inside of your TP Link R600 VPN. So let's begin. Okay, so once we log into the router, we want to go to network. And actually, it's under preferences. We click on preferences IP group. Over here, as you can see, I created a few groups named hackers followed by a specific number. This is because I needed to block hackers. So to block a specific hacker from accessing your service, what you do is go to add, you give a new name and a new description. So for this case, let's go to IP mask, right? And let's see, where is the description? Here we go, the IP mask. So what you would do if you wanted to block or create a new group and you wanted to block that website, you would type up the IP mask. So let's just say, for example, 7070-20 could be one. And then you would give it a name and click OK. Or you could give it a range. So say if you want to block a certain range of hackers or computers, you would just give the specification a range. So let's do 255. And then you would give it a name and press OK. This would be a IP group that you could apply to firewall settings. So once you have that created, you would review your settings. So as you can see, we have hackers one. We're blocking this group of IP addresses, this IP net mask, and this range of IP addresses. And these are all hackers that were trying to get into my VPN, trying to access the VPN network and hack the VPN network. So they were scanning. So unfortunately, I had to block these computers and hackers from getting into my network. So next we go over to IP group. Uh, we go ahead and create a new IP group. You generally give it a name, the same name that you gave your IP address, and then you apply the IP address name. So as you can see, we have hackers one. That was the first group we created. And then we applied IP group hackers one right here. So that's how you create your first IP group to start initially blocking hackers. Okay, so to block the hackers now, we just click on add and we create a new group name inside of the firewall access control. We block all, that's the policy, services we select all, and then the interface we do any IP group, we block, and we block the service type and the interface along with the effective time. So this would be any, this would be any, and this would be the actual hackers. So they will be the source. And then you click OK, and that's how to block hackers. So as you can see, I have all these hackers blocked to prevent them from scanning my network or getting into the VPN. OK, so we are revisiting the bandwidth control. We did activate it and put it to 77. So when bandwidth reaches 77 capacity, uh, it will notify me and start giving me alerts and letting me know what's going on. Then from here, you could create a bandwidth rule. So let's go and add rule one. Direction is land when all any group and it's in individual mode and the kilobits we want to go ahead and do maximum of that because we still want them to get a maximum effective anytime description optional status so you go ahead and click on ok and save and then there you go you will have also another group that prevents bandwidth control so uh, you're, you're allowed to set certain devices to have a certain amount of upstream and downstream Session limit we have enabled. So as you can see, we have session limit, max session of 10,000. It's enabled. 
and then if you go over to session monitor you can see the IP addresses and the max sessions for each IP address so as you can see some of these devices get three sessions seven six if you have a bunch of internet connections open you'll probably get somewhere around like 100 or maybe like 50 so just take note of that this is a way to shut down your network if more connections are permitted this is good for limiting uh, say a specific hack or it helps you figure out how many sessions a specific computer has and then you could diagnose and say okay this computer needs to be taken off the network or configured in a way that's not reaching more than its maximum sessions so that's good right there load balancing we already talked about that was if you have two internet service providers unfortunately we don't and then routing so we could create a black hole here to prevent a specific computer accessing a certain site so if we pull up a command line here and we do ping that address yeah, hypothetically it shouldn't be reachable as you can see so that's how to put a specific network in a black hole similar to the edge router black hole that was featured in a previous video next we will implement the web authentication so this basically prevents anybody from logging on to a computer on your network and accessing the internet this prevents them from basically just going on to your network like i said going on to your wi-fi logging in they can't get the internet without a certain username so let's go ahead and create this enable we leave the port and portal authentication default for the time I want them to be refactored every 100 minutes actually let's do every 240 minutes we have a customized page already set uh, we could upload the photograph and I do believe we already have the photograph here let's see let's go over here so what I need to do is change the size of this photograph I will be right back with that photograph okay so now we go over to the upload photograph we browse to the proper size photograph click OK and upload okay and then expiration reminder let's do three days and once or periodically to intervals of please enter authentication and then we enable and save okay so now we have a secure portal where you would log in and this is the login page when you go onto the Wi-Fi you would see a username and password just to get to the internet just to get to the network same for any hardwired devices so this improves security then we go over here to user management and we want to create new users so over here we go ahead and create a new user we give it a formal user and we do guest and then from here we will type in a specific password and then the authentication period along with binding we want a maximum of five users uh, the limit stream we don't want to add and telephone or description we don't have to add and so let's go ahead and create a nice password for them okay so inside of time settings what we want to do is assign a specific NTP server so in previous videos we had deployed a Ubuntu NTP server so as you can see I signed the appropriate IP address for the appropriate NTP server so that's 10.0.0.3 and then we just click on save to save any changes next we want to deploy a system log server to capture all the system logs so the main security logs that you want to take care of are the following um, 
emergency, alert, critical, error, and warning. So if we click on warning and click on save, as you can see, we get all the specific warnings for this device. So this is where I was able to capture a specific hacker from trying to hack into the VPN. So let's go back to click on all levels. And then we want to change the server IP to 10.0.0.10. .10. And what we will do is we will bind a system log server to this IP address in the next few slides. So what you want to do is install this SNMP soft system log watcher. This is a free program that allows you to monitor five logs and then a standard license it costs $99 and a pro license $199 the free version is worth it if you have a small network and only have one router to t keep track of or if you have about less than five routers switches and devices that you want to keep track of with a system log manager so then from here what you want to do is go ahead and Install the program by scrolling down and selecting one of these links. For me, I have the program already installed, so I don't have to install it again. And then what we want to do is go over to the program. And this is the first time we launch it so it says select system watcher GUI mode you could select standalone applications connect to remote server or do manage local system server we are going to select manage local and from here the program is going to pop up we want to click on stop server and we want to select settings so as you can see, settings is right here. We want to click on settings. And then we want to locate server. And we want to bind a specific IP address of 10.0.0.10 .10 for both of these addresses. Then we click on apply and OK. We keep the default port and we're not using TCP to capture the system log information, so that's fine. Click OK. And, and then we want to change the internet settings for that adapter. So we go into control panel. We click on network and sharing. And then we select the network adapter that's connected to this network. And it's not that one, it's going to be this one. Let's see. Okay, so as you can see, this is the network adapter right here. And what we want to do is change the adapter to have default settings. So we're changing the default settings instead of obtaining automatically, we will be assigning a IP address statically. So we assign the IP address of 10 dot zero dot zero dot ten keep the subnet mask same for your network and then your default gateway along with your dns servers so we just change this to have google for all of them click ok click ok and then internet access is not accessed or enabled yet because we have to re-log on to a web page so we won't do that but i will show you that in just a moment okay so we click ok click ok and now we have the proper ip address of 10.0.0.10 .0 .0 .10. that's good go over here and then now what we want to do is start the server okay then hypothetically we could try to log in so what i will do is log back in we will be back in just a moment
Okay, so we're back at the login page. I'm going to use a false and fake username and password to see if I could get the log information from my system log server. So you click on login. And as you can see, the password and the username was not compatible. So let's go ahead and add a couple more characters, just random characters. Okay, as you can see, login failure. So if we scroll over to the system log manager over here, as you can see, there's a warning level and it says 10.0.0.10 failed to log in to the web interface. It had the wrong password. So yeah, the system log is now working. Okay, as you can see, we got the authentication splash page where we have to authenticate just to get internet for this device. So this is good for preventing any kind of unauthorized users from accessing the network, like I said. So we type in the username and then the password. And hypothetically, then you should be able to get the internet. So we go ahead and click on save. And as you can see, it's online. You could go offline right here. And then we go over to a web page. And let's go ahead and bring up a random web page here. And as you can see, we could access Xbox Live or any other web page that gives us the capability to browse the network. So this is good for network security. Anybody on this Wi-Fi associated with this network will be forced to enter in their credentials to access the network shares, the network information. So that is everything for the TP-Link. That's basically um, all the features that it has designed built in. We didn't go over the load balancing because we don't have two internet service providers. And I think there's a few other things like remote control or remote access. We don't want to allow remote access for this router because I could always use a VPN to remote into the local network and then go from there. So just take note that this is a very powerful router that allows you to secure your network and put certain security policies in place. If you enjoyed this video, please like and don't hesitate to contact Tilly Fox today for all your consulting needs. You have a good afternoon.